Short Histories, Perspectives, Journeys, and Revelations presents the Peloponnesian War. For clarification, the topic here does not include the First Peloponnesian War. What is the Peloponnesian War? Well, it is an ancient war held in Greece between the two leading city-states at the time with the Delian League formed to thwart off the Persians led by Democratic Athens and the Peloponnesian League led by oligarchic Sparta. The fight virtually engulfed all of Greece and was regarded by Thucydides, a preeminent historian, as the most momentous war up to that time. Now, let's talk about the main rivals. Athens was a maritime power with a strong navy, and although it was based in Attica, the peninsula where Athens was located, it was spread across the islands and coastal cities of the northern and eastern Aegean Sea. The tribute from these islands brought wealth which financially prepared Athens for war. Now, let us talk about Sparta. Sparta and its allies, unlike Athens, were land-based powers except for the sea power Corinth. They were from the Peloponnese and Central Greece. Large armies when summoned were unstoppable because of the famed Spartan forces. Because one was land-based and the other was naval, Athens and Sparta were relatively unable to fight decisive battles. Now, what are the causes of the war? Before this Peloponnesian War, a first Peloponnesian War occurred and a 30 years peace was signed as truce to conclude it. But in the following years, there was an uneasy peace. Hostilities emerged once more when Athens allied itself to Corcyra, a strategically important colony of Corinth, leading to the Battle of Sibota, which was a naval confrontation that ended inconclusively. Tensions increased more when Athens instructed Potidaea, a colony of Corinth but pays tribute to Athens as a member of the Delian League, to tear down its walls, send hostages to Athens, dismiss Corinthian magistrates, and refuse more that come from the city in the future. Potidaea revolted with Corinthian aid sneaked in the city, leading to the Battle of Potidaea. Athens also imposed the Megarian decrees, which were trade sanctions between the Athenian Empire and Megara, a Spartan ally. Athens made steps that violated the Thirty Years' Treaty. Sparta and its allies accused Athens of aggression and threatened war, but under the advice of Pericles, the most influential leader of Athens at the time, they did not back down. Diplomatic efforts failed to resolve the dispute. Thebes, a Spartan ally, then attacked Plataea, an Athenian ally by spring, therefore starting the war. Thucydides wrote in his book, the history of the Peloponnesian War. The growth of the power of Athens and the alarm which this inspired in Lacedaemon made war inevitable. The rise of Athens instilled fear in Sparta and that fear forced them to clash. Historians divide the war into three phases, the first of which is the Archidamian War, which is named after the king Archidamus II who led the invasion of Attica. Sparta, with its dominant army, repeatedly attacks Attica by land, while Athens, with its powerful navy, raids along the Peloponnese and the Aegean coastline. The citizens of Attica abandon their farms and just move in, inside the long walls. Athens may have been deprived of its countryside in Attica, yet did not suffer because of the access to sea by Athens through the port of Piraeus, connected by the long walls. Per Pericles declined to engage the Spartans near the city's walls, obviously because of the superior Spartan forces. Athens was then ravaged by plague, brought in by trade with a, with a third to two-thirds of Athens' population dead, including Pericles, the influential leader of Athens, and his sons. Sparta attacked with the hope of finishing Athens once and for all, but Athens was able to hold back the revolt. Mytilenians revolted and attempted to unite its island of Lesbos against Athens, but it failed. Cleon, an Athenian war hawk, won the Battle of Sphacteria, capturing 300 Spartan hoplites. At this point, victory looked bleak for Sparta, and therefore it sued for peace. Then Brasidas, who was a Spartan general, gained significant success in Chalkidiki. In the Battle of Amphipolis, both Brasidas and Cleon were killed. 
After 10 years of the first phase of the war, the Peace of Nicias was signed. It was named after Cleon's rival, Nicias, who persuaded the Athenians to accept Sparta's offer for peace. It ended the Archidamian War with the death of Brasidas and Cleon, who were war hawks for both city-states. The peace was inst- intended to last for 50 years, but was undermined by conflict and rebellion. During this time, an allied coalition led by Argos and Athens was defeated by Sparta and its allies at the Battle of Mantinea, which was the largest battle in the war. For land. The second phase of the war was called the Sicilian Expedition, and it began when Athens tried to take over Syracuse with a massive expeditionary force to aid its distant ally in Sicily. Nicias, who was the leader of the expedition, procrastinated and the campaigning season ended and winter came. The delay allowed Syracuse to send help, send for help from Sparta. Aided by Sparta from Gilippos, Syracuse broke the Athenian blockade. Even with reinforcements, the Athenian army was defeated and the attack was a disastrous failure. With the whole force destroyed as they tried to retreat, it was a catastrophic turning point in Sparta's favor. The third phase of the war began and was called the Ionian War or the Decalian War. Sparta fortified Decalia near Athens and prevented the city of Athens to use their land for the whole year round and prevented overland supply shipment, resulting in supplies being brought into the city by sea at increased expense. The Ionians rose in revolt against Athens. Syracuse sent their fleet to the Peloponnesians and the Persian Empire decided to support the Spartans with money and ships because of their resentment to the increasing power of Athens. Revolt and faction within Athens threatened itself. Athens was then led into political turmoil with its democracy overthrown by, by an oligarchical revolution. Democ- democracy was reinstituted in the city after two years. The Spartan fleet then sailed to the Dardanelles, which was the source of Athens' grain, and the Athenians were left with no choice but to follow as they were threatened of starvation. The Athenian navy was totally destroyed at the Battle of Aegospotami by the Spartan fleet led by Lysander, who received much aid from the Persians. The impenetrable blockade by Sparta starved Athens to capitulation from the prolonged siege. Athens was then left with no choice but surrender and was stripped of its walls, its fleet, and its overseas possessions. At that point, the Peloponnesian War has ended with Sparta victorious. Now, what was the impact of the war? Firstly, it marked the end of the Golden Age of Greece. The styles of warfare changed. It has led the fall to the fall of Athens, which was once the most powerful Greek city-state. And the balance of power shifted as Athens was absorbed into the Spartan Empire, in essence, a transformation of the Athenian Empire. Athens continued its existence under the rule of the Thirty Tyrants oligarchs loyal to Sparta. Then, democracy was later restored. Sparta gained dominance over Athens, but less than a century later, both were conquered by the kingdom of Macedon. First, by Philip II of Macedon, who conquered all Greece except Sparta, which was later subjugated by his son, Alexander. Like, share, and subscribe for more content. Ring the notification bell to be notified for future videos. Remember, History is your ally. This is the Short Histories channel. Until then.